Well, should we go ahead and proceed with the meeting? Okay, to push the button. Um, Ron, do you want to give us an update on the storm damage repairs? Um, we're actually looking pretty good. We're down to everything's fixed except for the coffee tree. Um, Which the, repairs, the repairs to the boat launch are good. Um, Buddy's Pond Dam's fixed. It seems to be a good fix. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we got we caught cleared, up finally. Cleared the trails. So the things that remain are uh, we still need to fix the ground. There he is. Welcome, Mayor. Uh, we still need to replace the um, section of boardwalk that floated away. Um, and then we need to fix the gravel pathway from the Putney Circle parking to the trailhead. And also um, uh, reroute one of the paths in Putney Pond Woodland Trails around the fallen coffee, Kentucky coffee tree. You know, that was the uh, at one time, the state champion tree. So that gives you an indication of how large that is. And so it was um, a big tree. Ron took a look at it, and I joined him. And and we agree that even if they were able to cut through it, the way the uh, the stump is, it's the stump would be. A, um, Everything's a kind of balanced. Tree. Yeah, and it would ultimately could ultimately fall. So we're thinking we could route the trail around the backside. So I envision scheduling at least um, one or two work days um, to redo the gravel path, which it, it's really a matter of moving the gravel off the um, landscape cloth, taking up the landscape cloth, and then spreading the gravel. Because what's happening is instead of the gravel getting um, packed into the trail, it's it's washing away because of that landscape cloth. So I think if we remove the landscape cloth, respread the gravel, that will take care of that issue. And then rerouting, I think rerouting the trail is probably a couple of hours if we have four or five people working on it. Yeah, I don't think that's going to take long at all. And Ron suggested that if we were if we manage to um, schedule a work day during the week, during regular work hours, um, that maybe one or, or two of the guys could help us reroute that trail, which would it'd be great to have some strong men <laughs> helping us do that. So I don't know if anyone on this call is interested in, in helping with the um, rerouting that trail and when you would be available, but I'd, I'd, I'd like, kind of like to get something scheduled in the next week or two if we can do that which trail were you talking about linda I'm, i've missed it it's the uh putney pond woodland trail oh okay. so yeah and which is probably not i think most of us don't use that park as much as we do Harrods creek but it's up near the near the top of the woodland trails uh where that tree came down and we just need to reroute it and Rod okay. and i kind of looked at where it needed to go and I really don't think it's going to take that much time. Okay. So I I don't know if anyone's got dates they might be available. Could, could Tuesday's that. the only day I could not do Linda, but um if anybody has other day preferences, um but I'm I'm able to help outside of Tuesday. I could help Friday or Monday. This coming Friday or Monday? Yes, the seventh or the tenth. Or the tenth. Okay, I have a meeting on Friday. Monday Friday. would be good for me if that worked uh, with Ron. I think, it, I think it's supposed to rain on Monday. Um, I have a meeting at ten. It's not supposed to take more than an hour. So anytime after eleven or so. Would that? Would that work? I've got a I've got a nine to ten meeting. So actually, I can see, I don't have to be. I can send the guys up there to help. So 
Oh. And then I'll join after the after the meeting. Would that work? Why don't yep. we say Friday? Do you want to say 1030? Would that I'm just I don't know if it's gonna be hot next week or what the what the, Yeah, they, it is supposed to get uh, hot again. So we'd be better off going earlier. Um but I probably can't get there until 10:15 or 10:30. Fine with whatever time. Okay. Can we say 10:30? How about we just do 10:30? Is that okay? This fr this Friday, right? 10:30? No, it, didn't we say Monday? Are we talking Friday or Monday? I would say Friday be the best oh, day. Oh, Friday, Friday I can do any day, any time. Friday. So why don't we go earlier if we if we can? Yeah, do you want to go at 10 a.m. then? Yeah, let's do well. Yeah, Friday at nine. I will have the guys meet everybody up there, and I'll join right okay. after the meeting. Okay. Now we're going to we're, need we're going to need some Maddox and some yard rake. Maddox, chainsaw, right? Sorry. We'll have all the tools together. Ron, don't we have a WebEx meeting Friday morning? Yeah, that's the meeting I was talking about. Right. It's, it's yeah. Um. So can the guys, we've got that equipment in the, in the shed in Harrods Creek, right? Or do, or right. I, yeah. I'll have everybody up there. So if we could get maybe about three or four masses and do we have the yard rakes or should we bring our own? I've got a yard rake I can bring. We should have the rakes. I'll check. Like I said, I'll make sure all the equipment okay. rakes. Okay. That's great. Just, just everyone bring water. Um, and work gloves and wear sturdy shoes and all the normal drill. It's Friday. Can we bring beer? <laughs> oh, alcohol. Uh, alcohol the parks, the oh, that's right. It's a it. rule. Working in then, so you're ready. Darn it. <laughs> so um I think we're we're good. Um I think Lynn had talked about trying to make arrangements with some people that know how to do the boardwalk to replace that boardwalk section at some point. Ron and, Ron and I have talked, and I'm going to get a chance to look at the materials right now this Friday. We've got Amanda Dewey uh, putting in the ki uh, the kiosk. We went to do this last weekend, and we know there's we found rock every pl place we dug. But we found one spot where there wasn't rock, and Ron concurred. So at 9 o'clock Friday morning, Amanda and her parents are there. And she's packing off to college next Tuesday. Wow. So we've got to get the support part and the and the bulletin board part of the kiosk in place, set it in concrete, and then come back the next day and put the roof the roof on it. So that'll be this Friday. And then what I'll attempt to do, scouting right now still not, uh, but our, we've got some adult leaders. And so my thought is next up sometime a little bit later in the month, we'll get over there and get that piece of boardwalk rebuilt and put back in. And then we'll look at September as far as the problems we've got with the ground cloth under the new gravel trail section, where it's not even and all the gravel have shifted for the same reason as you mentioned, it didn't dig into the soil. I'm hoping in the areas where we've got the problem, we can simply just cut the fabric out right there, pull it out from under, re-rake the gravel and the gravel hook sticks. I'll get my fingers crossed in that, but I'll get some more adults together and we'll try to get that done in September. Okay, okay. That, that sounds great. Um, Ron, as far as the boardwalk goes, is it still, I haven't been back there, but is it still closed off at the end near, uh, near the swing? No, no, we just, uh, we, um, just okay. closed, uh, closed off the area that's damaged and you can see where okay. people are walking around it. So, yeah, <laughs> well, as long as the ground's not too muddy, they can walk around it. And yeah, okay, yeah. I think. Uh, the guys did a great job taking it apart. They actually numbered the boards when they took it apart. So, oh, wow. <laughs> that's great. Uh, the frame is still in one piece. All the uh, deck boards have been taken off and numbered. Um, okay. I think, Lynn, all the brackets are still on it. But since I wasn't in on putting it together, I couldn't tell you for sure. So, if we can hook up before you're ready to work, we'll take a look, make sure everything's there. I'll get with you and come by one morning. We'll just take a look. And if I got to pick up a few more things, we'll make sure we do that. I'm pretty confident we got, we found all of it, if not, if not most of it. So good. 
Okay, let's move on. Um, the next item is the park brochure. And Sarah sent um, copies out to everyone. I know Carolyn made a couple of suggestions. And I guess we should just maybe have a little discussion about, about that. Well, I thought it looked great. Sarah, do you want to walk us through any of it or? Um, I know uh, Carolyn sent out in that email, um, Carolyn, if you want to speak to your email, those sound like good things. I just, I know, um, I, just to make sure that uh, the city is fine with those and that Ron is fine. I mean, I, I think so, but since it encompasses a couple of things, I didn't know if you want to touch on that, Carolyn. Yeah, well, and this would be, uh, one of my items would be consistent with what um, the restrictions are on our kiosk and on our website, and that would be to add a uh, prohibition against smoking in the park. So, you know, you could have the prohibition against uh, uh, alcohol, drugs, or smoking in the parks. And like I say, that's on both our, our uh, city website and on the kiosk. So that, you know, shouldn't be a, an issue. The other thing that I would suggest is that there be some sort of verbiage that would prohibit people from removing any natural materials from the park unless authorized. Now, you know, I looked at uh, Bernheim's prohibitions and they have that um, expressed as no collecting. Somehow, I don't think that quite gets it. Um, you, you know, what I think the intent, intent should be. And I don't know if you, you have room to add this much verbiage or not, but I would suggest something like uh, no picking of, uh, or picking of wildflowers or removal of natural materials is prohibited unless authorized. And, you know, I just, um, during the spring, I see too many people coming out with flowers in their hands, and that's just not a good thing. And even though we can't really police that, uh, it's a good reminder for people looking at the park's brochure or, you know, checking any of our restri restrictions to be reminded that that's not uh, a good environmental ethic to do that. So those are my only two suggestions. Other than that, I think it looks great. And then there were, I, I did have, um, this would be more for the city. The the no smoking thing makes sense uh, to add it, you know, in my opinion as well. I know, uh, Carolyn, you had put in there that um, some of the other parks have, including e-cigarettes. I just wanted to make sure that if, if the city's fine, if I put that in there, or if you don't want me to touch on that, people get, you know, I just wanted to, yeah, Bernheim has that um, stipulation as well. So, uh, I mean, I'm I'm okay with with either either way you want to go with, with that. There are right. fine with that. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure perfect. And then the other thing that uh, got touched on, um, and I assume again, as this would be more if the city is fine putting it in there, is the no firearms. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure we can legally do that. Okay. Uh, we'll Bernheim does with, it, but uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to check with Chris. I, that's what I'm saying is I don't think it can be possible. Um, if we get into Second Amendment rights, we'll have, we'll have to check. There's been so many changes to the open carry law. Okay. Um. Of course, it is illegal to discharge an arm, a firearm yeah, in the right. city limits. So why should they be carrying a firearm if they can't? But you can, you can, you can discharge in protection of life or limb. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe it's better just not to even bring that up, you know, yeah. as an issue. Okay. It's, uh. it, I agree. I don't think there's any reason to carry one back there, but. Like I said, we'll we'll we'll, talk, we'll check with um, Chris and see what he what he thinks on it. Okay. Um, the the other thing we still need to do, and I guess we're waiting for 
for Ron and, and Harold to come to a meeting of the minds, but the emergency evacuation point, you know, before we really publish the, the new brochure, we really should have that determined and marked. So I don't know how to move that forward. Yeah. On the map where the two trails come together, the red and the green, I mean, basically right there where they, they merge together, you can just put the two dots there. That's fine. And then Ron and I can come up with the signs uh, as soon as we get a chance. Um, and Ron, next time I see you, I can I can talk to you about that. It should be pretty simple. Okay. So that's where okay. we would go off of Heritage View Circle. I have I can find the exact address in just a second. No, it's fine. So just in terms of that map, I, I don't have it uh, probably in front of me. I don't think, but where the red and green trail come together, just pop it right in there. Yeah, right where Heritage View Circle oh. connects itself. I gotcha. The T of the P. Gotcha. So, which end is it? The far, the far end. So the, if you if on Google Maps it is. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm looking at her sketch. Okay. At the between sixty six seventeen and sixty six nineteen, Heritage View Circle is the house address, but it's straight down from there. Okay. Okay. I'll look that up, and if I have to, Harold, I'll send you like a screenshot just to make sure I understood. Yeah, and and, and physically on the trails, it's where those two bridges are. Those two little short bridges, right. where there's a clear section. It's a gas line straight to Harris View Circle. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Okay. All right. Great. Anything more on the brochure before we move on? Just kudos to Sarah for taking this on. Good job. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. Yes. yes. Um, so the next item on the agenda, um, Lynn, is the Boy Scout update. I I trust you're still with us. I know you're muted and your picture's gone. But... Lynn, are you there? Uh... Lynn, are you there? Maybe not. How about how about now? We well, can hear yeah. you. We can't yeah. see. Okay. You. There, there you are. Oh. Yeah. Again, Frankfurt internet speed is dreadfully slow. But anyway, uh, as I noted a few minutes ago, we've got Amanda Dewey working this weekend. The Deweys have done an awful lot for Prospect. Her two brothers have both done Eagle Scout projects. They worked on both ends of our of the uh, boardwalk sections for us. Uh, Colin Dewey is her twin, is her twin. And so when she gets done, we'll have all three Dewey kids running their outwards for doing work and see a prospect. We also have Nate work as far as putting in gravel and putting in uh, cedar boards and all to help improve that. And then uh, just yesterday, we've got the approval process going on Natalie Young. She'll be doing the picnic tables uh, down by the parking lot, and that should take place this fall. Now, Natalie's going to school, too, but she'll be here locally, so she's not in, under quite the gun that a man is. Three picnic tables, gravel border will be installed. And so the kids are active, even though scouting is not back up running just yet. These guys are all trying to get their eagle ranks and get that done. One thing I will... Um mention is today when I was at Harrods Creek Park, there were uh, two women and a dog sitting on the on the grass near the canoe launch. And there were uh, four or five kids playing some some sort of game with it wasn't really baseball, but they had something kind of like that. So they had a soccer ball, they were kicking the soccer ball, they were throwing this other ball and having a great old time on that on that cement um, path to the canoe launch. So I think that the picnic tables will be well used. I'm sure if there were picnic tables in that grassy area, those women would have been sitting up there. So I think that'll be a great addition. So, um, Lynn, do you have anything else on scouts or are we ready to move on? Okay. 
I guess we're ready to move on. Um, Mayor, I'm wondering if you would like to give us an update on the um, what's going on with City Council. And I know I've been listening to a lot of budget meetings. And if you've got any insights you would like to share with us, I thought I'd give you the opportunity. Well, I'm not sure what to say here. Um, Harold is on the council. Uh, he's been to most of the meetings. I think he missed the one yesterday. Um, I've lost track of how many special meetings the council has had, five or six, uh, going over the, I'll show you what it is, it, just a page of it, looks like this, it has about 15 pages, <clears throat> and they've been going through it line by line and asking a lot of questions. Um, I think they're near the end of the process. Uh, they decided yesterday to form a, I'm going to call it a subcommittee. They call it a working group. Doesn't matter what you call it, uh, to kind of collate and put together all the things that they've talked about so far, which probably is getting very near the end of the process. Uh, and then report back, and I think they set a time limit of about 10 days for that group to report its findings and uh, to the entire council. They're not going to take any action, which of course they cannot. It has to be a public meeting to do that. Um, and so here we are, it's August 5th, I guess. So by August 15th, they will have reported back to the entire six member council and um, I think we're near the end of the process. Uh, we've never done what they're doing this time before, probably because uh, I did it differently this time. Um, in years gone by, I've either had two or three members of the council uh, or a kind of a working group before presenting the budget. But last year when I did that, it became very cumbersome and in some cases contentious. And I just said, well, I wasn't going to do that anymore. So uh, my proposed budget was based on meetings with Ron, Laura, Jeff, uh, Sherard, and myself. And based on the previous year's budget, which is the one just ended, and uh, the experience of each of us, we presented a proposed budget, and that's what they've been picking through. I will say that they brought up some good uh, issues, mainly, if not entirely, in the public works area. And then in, while that's been going on, we've had new issues emerge, uh, one being the leaky cupola I've never known how to pronounce that C-U-P-O-L-A that sits on top of City Hall. Uh, it's been there since that part of City Hall was built back around the year 2000, so it's 20 years old. And Ron's had people, he could speak to it, but he's had people come in and look at it. I think it was K&P Roofing, uh, who I know personally, I've used them and they're very good. And they've proposed well, one proposal is to just take it off, just get rid of it and roof it over. Uh, the more expensive uh, proposal is to replace it with a new one. Uh, in either case, you're talking some serious money. Ron can tell you how much. That's one thing that came up just since this process began. Uh, another thing that came up, which is parks related, is what are we going to do about Putney Pond? And it's filling with silt. And this committee, uh, in my view, should have some input uh, in terms of a long range plan. I don't know how long, but certainly going out a year or two as to whether you want Putney Pond to become Putney Meadow or whether you want to spend what I understand is a great deal of money, maybe getting up 
in the neighborhood of a million dollars to dredge it out and keep it as a pond. In fact, Ron and I were talking about this just today. And as you know, there's a stream that comes down, which is the source of the water in Putney Pond. And then it goes to the dam and down further into the marina. Uh, that water is going to keep coming. So it, it, it seems to me you're always going to have a stream coming through there. And how much pond area you want to have the city pay the city for to retain is something that you need to be thinking about and talking with each other about. Um, and there are a great many things on the table as far as public works that are in front of the council at this time. Uh, air conditioning on the second floor, uh, which needs replacing and uh, some modifications that the council members suggested. Uh, that's expensive. Uh, what am I missing, Ron? There's a lot of public works things out there. Oh, yeah, the, the uh, behind City Hall, the fire escape, uh, that's not a big dollar issue. Uh, repairing the entry door, what used to be City Hall's front door that's all painted green, it's near the Gallop loses a horse. That needs some work. That's a, again, that's a minor expense in the scheme of things. That's about maybe three thousand uh, dollars. So that's where most of the action is uh, in terms of the budget. I will add that the year we just ended, uh, June thirtieth, uh, in that year revenues exceeded. Uh, all expenses by the tune of $411,000. Uh, they've had a first reading of an amended budget for that year. Uh, hasn't, I guess it'll come up at the next regular meeting, I'm sure it will, uh, for passage. And in that, what they propose to do is to set aside part of it for road paving uh, we have a lot of money accumulated for that topic. And the balance was that they put into accumulated reserves. Uh, Ron, do you remember the number? I almost have it in my head. It was $270,000 that they're putting into accumulated reserves. So, I mean, I. It, it, it looks to me like seven, not six. In kind of a in any kind of a money crunch here because uh, the amount that they've set aside for roads at this time, if you include the amount that's in the road budget, the road aid budget, we're up around five hundred thousand dollars, I believe. Uh, again, not looking at any papers. So there's Harold. You can chime in too. You've been at most of these meetings, but. Looks to me like financially the city's doing quite well, uh, and the council's just being very careful. And they're doing right now what we used to do before uh, I presented the proposed budget in May. Any questions? I agree with you, the mayor. I think on a couple of things that we've come up with, um, we're taking like for the little prospect stickers, we're taking some money from one account and or of one budget item and from another. We're just trying to find it and line them up and make things a, a little bit better. I know that. I will make uh, a comment about the, the Putney Pond um, issue. And in the council meeting yesterday, one of the council members, uh, Frank Fulcher, asked if we had considered doing, you know, what would a study cost to have someone knowledgeable come and make a recommendation about what our options are? for maintaining the pond or should we just let it silt in? What should we do? So yesterday I sent an email to Kentucky Waterways Alliance asking if they have some um, knowledge of people that could do such a survey and also is there any funding um, available since it's part of the uh, watershed, I think that the Waterways Alliance would be interested 
um, in what happens to Putney Pond and, and how that affects Heron's Creek. Um, so I I just sent that yesterday after the after the council meeting. We'll see if if uh, we get any kind of uh, response from them. And well, that was a good yeah. move, Linda, uh, because potentially what you decide you want to do at Putney Pond could be, as I've already said, very expensive. And I think Ron has made some inquiry into the options and the costs. Do you have anything you want to contribute on that, Ron? Um, yeah, about 10 years ago, I had my uncle who at the time was on a major construction company come out and take a look. And he gave me an estimate at the time of about $2 million to graduate. Uh, the issue is that you get, just can't pull the silt out and dump it somewhere. It has to be pulled. You have to find somewhere to lay it out. But it has to be treated, turned, treated, turned. It's all process. I have to go for it. Um, and that's where the real expense runs into it. Uh, somebody else had somebody come out and look. I don't remember who, but the, the, they were about the same area too, right around two million. So, what is the alternative, Ron, to dredging it out? Letting it silt in. It'll eventually become a meadow or a wetland. And there still would be a stream running through it, right? There would well, have to be. Yeah, little little hunting creek, you're never gonna get rid of it. I mean, it's that's that's a that's a cost. You know, um I wonder if someone from the uh, <laughs> US Department of Agriculture Soil Conservation Service could be consulted. I know my dad used to work for that organization and he worked with farmers on their ponds and you know in some cases in probably most cases it was ponds that had leakage but in other cases it may have been a silting issue as well i just wondered if someone from the uh, soil conservation service might provide some expertise or be able to steer you in the direction of somebody else that might give you a quote it's just worth a thought. Time. Sure, sure. I think we should. Uh, I think we should be creative and proactive, and just see what our options are, and and again, um, find out if there's any funding sources available, uh, governmental or otherwise. So, now another I another option too is a, would be a bank stabilization program. Which I checked with Fish and Wildlife, they do have one, but they weren't interested. I tried several times to get them. That's where the majority of the silt is coming from. The creek has been redirected by beavers a couple of times, and plus, every time we have one of these hundred-year rains, which is like every every five days, it seems like here lately, uh, the creek changes. I mean, if you're back there a lot, like we are, you can tell that. It, it, it literally shifts every time we have a big rain. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear what, you know, Linda hears back or Carolyn had that a good idea only from a like a, hey, is there an actual ecological waterway sort of significant piece to it? But if it's just my opinion, if it's just to maintain the pond, like Ron said, I mean, Mother Nature doesn't care if you take all the silt out, it could come back six months from then a month from then a year from then i mean whatever's going to happen yeah. with that pond if it's meant to be a meadow mother nature will make it so that's just my thought but but i do linda that was a great idea to bring, ask because they may go Ooh, we we actually do need to save x amount or whatever because of because that's the stuff i i i just don't know i'm sure none of us know that, that significant piece but that's just my thought Anyone have any other business that we should be discussing? Uh, Linda, the yes. gentleman that spoke, I think at the last meeting that um, talked about Terry Creek, would he be able to give any input? That he is the uh, executive director of the Kentucky Waterways Alliance. So that's who I sent my email. Oh, I'm to. sorry. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I, I thought of him because, you know, we have been in working with 
potential. Um, any, any other business to discuss? And one other comment about the budgeting process. Uh, most of you probably know, but for those who don't, uh, under the law, what we're doing now is operating as if we were at the beginning of 2019 under that budget. In other words, you could just go back to square one under the previous year's budget and start over with that budget. So that's what we're doing right now until the council passes a budget for the current fiscal year. Um, one other thing, and I'll, I'll say this for Stuart's benefit, since you were a little late in joining us, we're planning to uh, meet at, what did we say? Ten, what time did we, oh, did I write it down? Are we meeting at 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock at Putney Pond at the, uh, the circle, I think is the best place to meet. And then we're going to hike back into the woods to reroute the trail around the uh, Kentucky coffee tree that fell. So, when are you doing that? Nine o'clock Friday morning. Okay. So, I don't know if you're available, but um, uh, I think Rusty and or Brian are going to help us out, which is why we're trying to do it every week. So, we've got a couple of strong bodies helping us out. Okay. So, Linda, I have a question for the mayor, if he's still on. Yes. Right here. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I don't know whether uh, Hunting Creek Drive is scheduled for repaving or not, but uh, even if it isn't, I would like to request a restriping of the walking biking lanes because I walk that area all the time. And other people I see, you know, are also walking, riding their bikes, and those uh, markings have almost disappeared. So, is that a possibility that that uh, could me, be in the budget? A, uh, let me ask a question first of Ron. I wasn't here the last time that was done. I think that was done during Todd Everly's tenure. It was. I don't know how much it cost, and that's. Uh, and I think it'd be fine to do that, but again, we're into uh, what we're spending for what and what we're not spending uh, as the council continues to meet. How much money did that cost, Ron? Uh, I would have to look that up, boss. It's been so long. Um, memory serves, it was right around $12,000 for Hunting Creek Drive and, and, and uh, Sutherland Farm Road. When we did it, if memory serves right, I'd have to look it up. But well, for both, yeah, yeah, because one or two people in Innisbrook have asked me the same thing along Southern Farm Road. Um, and as an Innisbrook resident, I would say I agree with that because with all the breakers construction traffic, it's it's getting fairly dangerous to walk on the road. And I was on the other day, and someone with a big truck pulling a big trailer did not move to give me the right of way because someone else was coming and he didn't want to stop. And it was, you know, okay, I can step off the road, but it was a little scary to see that huge piece of equipment coming right at me without any, any sense that I was in a walking lane. So. Well, I can uh, and will recommend it, but it's going to be up to the council to appropriate the money and right. Uh, the request is very timely because right now is when they're doing that. As wow. I've already said, uh, in my mind, looking at the figures, uh, the city right now has a lot of money. Hey, boss, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Stephanie Gillison say that she'd be willing to repay the striping after the construction was done? After it was all done, yes, she yeah. did. Uh, maybe we could do it now and let her reimburse us. We can talk to her. I've got a decent relationship with Stephanie. Yeah, and when that striping was done, there was also, you know, the image of a, a cycle, a bicycle, like like uh, in other areas of the city where you have uh, cycling lanes. So that makes it clear that that's not to be, you know, for automotive automotive traffic. Right. 
Ron, didn't we have our own striping equipment at some point in time? You're muted, Ron. Sorry, keep forgetting about that. Uh, we did, but it's it's now defunct. Uh, okay, we actually wore it out. So that might be something to look into, just buying a new striper. Uh, but then again, well, we also run into the problem too, is we have to buy paint by the pallet load and storage is a problem. So. Okay, well, um, if there's nothing else to discuss, I think we need to talk about our next meeting date. Hey, can I, oh. You probably already talked about this, but Sarah, great job on the map. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we talked about adding, in case you had anything else, adding uh, some no smoking, please no removal of plant life type stuff, uh, the evac routes. Uh, so I don't know if you had anything else that you, since you're out there a lot, you know, what uh, stuff you knew of, but those were the things that came up. Uh, I, even though I think it should be self-evident that the person rowing is a canoe launch, some might see that as just a person rowing a canoe down the creek. So maybe put canoe launch and, you know, that's just my, to, just to idiot proof it. <laughs> and you got to put a couple deer out there, right? Because, you know. People want to see deer, so that'll people who don't live in Prospect want to see deer. There were there were deer in the meadow by the canoe launch when I got down here this morning, and they just kind of looked at me and kept munching. They're very tame. Um, so I'm looking at the first week or two of September for our next meeting. Um, I would, I guess I would prefer, oh, let's see, when is, I guess Labor Day is probably the 7th, is that correct? Does anyone know? Yes, Labor Day is the 7th. <coughs> I don't know if, you know, Wednesdays have worked pretty well for most people, I think. Um, we could go with the 9th, or I, I don't think council's meeting until the 21st in September. Yeah, council's, the council meeting's on the 21st. So we could... If we want to stay with Wednesdays, we could meet either the 9th or the 16th. 16th, I am on vacation. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm on vacation. <laughs> Would the 9th work? Yep. Ron, people? you just got back. I haven't been on vacation in a while, boss. A month or so. Just because you miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> Does... Does the ninth work, or does anyone have another suggestion? Could we do the tenth Thursday? That works for me. There's nothing no. on my schedule, so I'm fine okay. with what? me. Nobody else has a meeting plan that day. So. I would have to get off by four. I have a regular work call, so I'm good till four. Yeah, we're usually we're usually within an hour. My only thought with the, the time, this isn't to change anybody else because I think it's probably only me, is Charlotte, one of these days, will go to school in person. Uh, and so I'll pick her up at three. But I could always call in. So if everybody else is fine, don't worry about it. I just wanted to mention if anybody has any weird things at that time, uh, then, uh, you know, maybe maybe two. I don't know if anybody could do that. But that, that's just me. So. Don't change everything. <laughs> I, I can just call from the car or something. Why don't you meet at 2 o'clock on Thursday? Does that work? 2 o'clock on minute. Thursday, the 10th of September. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Great. Is there any thoughts or are we? Thanks for a good meeting, everyone. Thank you, Linda. All right, folks. Bye bye. Thanks, Linda. Appreciate it. So long. <laughs>